Okay, so before we begin, I want to show you where this yarn is coming from. I bought this yarn back in 2019, and I started to make this baby blanket when I was on maternity leave in February, just weeks before I had my daughter. I made, I started making this baby blanket, but it became very expensive because this yarn was actually, I think about $10 a skein. So I decided to stop making the baby blanket, even though I really liked how it was going. It had all these little popcorn stitches and then these little clusters, and it was very soft. So I am unraveling this, and we are going to make a pillow instead. So I did manage to unravel the first skein worth of the yarn, and I made a ball. And I always like having all of my yarn for long projects in balls because it doesn't get tangled when you're unraveling, it just unrolls from the ball very nicely. So if you go to the store, just find the yarn that works for you. Find something that you like. This is very, very soft, and I wish I could tell you what kind it was. I believe I got this at Michael's, but it is so soft. It's almost like Angora hair. It's just so very soft. And so just find something that you like and that's easy to work with and use a yarn that's not going to be too difficult so that you can see all of the stitches that you're working with. And for the pillow, I just bought Polyfill Premier. It's an ultra plush pillow insert and it is 18 inches. And so when you take your measuring tape, the 18 inches is from seam to seam. So I measured it and from the side seam all the way to the other side seam is exactly 18 inches. We're going to make our yarn square exactly 18 inches also. We'll just see how this turns out. I think this will look like a really nice decorative pillow when we're done. And I learned this pattern about a month ago. I think it's gonna look really good. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so even though I'm gonna make the pillow in the other yarn, I'm gonna show you how to do it with an easier yarn where you can really see what I'm doing and see the stitches clearly. And so this is just regular plain yarn and it's really pretty actually. It's from, the label is off, but this is from the Karen brand and I believe this was blush pink looks uh, like a darker shade of pink. So it's really pretty and would make a really great pillow also. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna tie a knot onto my hook. And for this particular yarn, I'm going down a size and it's I'm gonna use the G6 4.25 millimeter. And this hook just really seems to fit this yarn very well. So if you end up using the Karen brand and want to use a G6, then I think that would be a great fit. All right, so what we're gonna do, so for this posy pattern, you're going to chain a multiple of 10. So if you have an 18 by 18 pillow, you'll wanna chain a multiple of 10 leading up to, but not going over the 18 inches. So we'll just start chaining. Go ahead and chain. A multiple of 10. And we'll count and measure and see how close we are to the 18 inches without going over. So I have chained 70. I am going to do a try on. I'm going to go and put this on the edge at the seam and I'm going to pull it a little bit this way and get it on. Okay. And it goes all the way to the other seam without going over. It actually is about just almost about exact. And so when this is pulled a little tighter, it'll be a nice fit. If I had done 60, 
it was stopping up a little bit too short and this was going to be just a little too tight and I didn't want it that tight. It's better to have a little bit extra because you can always make adjustments later with the sewing. But if you're if you're way too short then and if you don't have elasticity then it's just not going to fit. So you want it to be tight but not too tight so this is great. So for this particular Karen yarn, 70 was a good number. Okay, so now that you have found your multiple of 10, we are going to add an additional two chains. So this is 71 and this is 72. And then you're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So we've got one, two, three, and four. One thing I want to point out is you'll, you're never going to double crochet in the first chain from hook. Let me take this off for a second. This is the chain, this is the 72nd chain, and this is the chain we're coming out of. If you were to try to crochet back into this chain, you would unravel. So you'll always see in directions crochet in the second chain from hook, which is going to be this one. So this is the one we just did, and this is where the loop is coming out of. So it's like the active chain. So this is chain number two, this is number three, and this is number four. So one, two, three, four. So we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So go ahead and yarn over. So one, two, three, four, right here. Okay, and then you'll see that your chain came up this way. And so from here on out, the chain three, because this is now a chain three, because you've used the fourth chain, so now that is being used. And so that left you with three chains over here. That is now going to count as a double crochet in from now on in every single row. It's double crochet in the rest of the chain and we should have 70 double crochets, including the chain three, when we're done. So, and just always make sure you know where you are. So we've just worked in here, so now we're gonna go underneath this loop here. And you need probably need to use your fingers, because the first row is always kind of a little tricky getting it started. And so here's the next one. There's the next one right here. So just underneath the side loop of the little V's that make up each and every chain. And we're going to continue on and double crochet all double crochets all along the chain and I will see you at the end of the chain. Okay, so I have gotten to the end of my chain and I counted all of my stitches and including the little chain three end here, I have 70 stitches. Now with the yarn that I'm gonna make the pillow out of at the very end, it was a thicker, heavier yarn, and I ended up with 60 stitches plus two. So, but this was 70 plus two with the demonstration yarn. So if you're using a medium weight yarn like this, like from the Karen brand, you might come up with 70 stitches for an 18 inch length pillow. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna build upward and we're going to chain three. And then we're gonna turn the work. And this chain three now counts as the first double crochet 
in this new row. And so you'll see that this is the last double crochet we did and the chain extends straight up above it. And so when we yarn over, we're going to be going into this next double crochet. And if you turn it toward you, you can see the little V. Okay, so right here. So you're gonna slide right underneath those two strands. And you're gonna pull up a loop. Okay, and so that's what it looks like. And go ahead and work double crochets one more time all the way down, and I will see you at the end of the row. All right, so I've completed my row of double crochets, and go ahead and chain three again. And turn your work. And now this is going to be a posy row. So in the very beginning, we did the chain and we're doing two rows of double crochets. And now we're looking at what is the right side now of the decorative pattern. And we're going to start with five double crochets. So this chain three is the first one. So do four more double crochets in the next four double crochets. So we've got the one, two, and three, and four. Okay, great. So counting that chain three, we've got one, two, three, four, and five. So now we're gonna make our first posy. And to make the posy, what you're gonna do is, you can see that you have two double crochets right on top of each other. And so you're going to yarn over and double crochet down in this, around the post of this double crochet. And then you're gonna make five double crochets with a pico stitch, and I'll show you how to do that. So you're gonna do five down this way, and then you're gonna turn, you're gonna work in this double crochet another five. And you can totally do this, don't be worried. This may seem a little confusing at first. And actually, a tip to really know where you are, mark the stitches to eliminate any confusion. So we're gonna be working in this one first, and then this one. So. Go ahead and work around this post and loop some yarn around this post to help you identify the post and then around this one, which is directly under this one. And these are the two posts that we're gonna make each side of the posy. So this is the left side of the posy, this is the right side of the posy. And you don't have to do this every single time, but I'm just showing that if, if you find yourself getting confused, feel free to do this until you get really comfortable identifying the post that you're supposed to be working into. Okay, so go ahead and yarn over and slide underneath that first post. And then you can turn it this way because now you're gonna be working along this post. So yarn over and pull up a loop. So go underneath that post and pull up your loop. Yarn over and do your normal double crochet stitch just like that. And then to do a pico stitch we're going to chain three And then we're going to slip stitch in the first chain of the chain three, which is right here. So just insert your hook in the very first chain, 
and then yarn over, pull through both loops, just like that. And this little ball here is a pico stitch. Okay, so let's go ahead and do four more around this post. And so this is a great way to lift it up and really know where you are. Never be confused, never get lost, always know where you are, no matter how you go about doing it. And if this really helps you, by all means do it until you become very comfortable and you might not need these later on. So let's go ahead and do another one. Yarn over, insert underneath the post of that double crochet and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through again. And then do another pico stitch. So we have one, two, three, and then slip stitch in that first chain, right like that, yarn over, pull through both loops with a slip stitch, and that's pico number two. Okay, let's go ahead and do it again. And then another pico. One, two, three. Slip stitch in the first chain. And we're just going to do this whole posy together. So that's the third pico. We need two more on this side of the posy, and this is the left side of the posy. So we'll yarn over and make another double crochet. Okay, and a pico, one, two, three, slip stitch in the first chain. One, two, three, four, so one more for this side of the posy. Okay, and last pico for this side. So chain three, slip stitch in the first chain. Notice I do it in two parts. I, I pull through and I pause to readjust and then I continue on. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is the left side of the posy. So now, so here we are. This is right here. You're gonna rotate this way and face this double crochet. And so we're going to do another five in this double crochet. But we're gonna actually just do four and then we'll get to the fifth and I'll explain. So we'll get, we're gonna actually just do four double pico. So just like we did before, yarn over, come underneath that post, yarn over and pull up a loop, and complete that double crochet, and do a pico, three chains slip stitch in the first chain. Okay. And we'll do three more. Slip stitch, make the pico. Okay, 
so two more to go. And one more double crochet pico. So this is a last pico. So we'll take a look at what we've done for the right side of the posy. Okay, so we've done four. So on this post right here, We've done one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When it's easy to see on a yarn like this, it's easy just to count the, the posts themselves. And then we are gonna do the fifth double crochet in this, around this post, but we are not going to finish it off with a pico. So we're gonna do the double crochet around that post and we're gonna stop right there. So you'll have nine little picots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you'll have 10 double crochets. So five on this side of the posy, five on this side, and five on this side. And so then when you straighten it out again, when you straighten out your work again, just like this, you're going to fold the posy over so that you can see, tighten this a little bit, yarn over, and you can see that it looks very obvious. This is the next double crochet, but you're gonna want to double crochet at the top of the one you worked in on the left side of the posy here. So you're gonna yarn over, and you can see it better this way, yarn over and insert it in the top of the post of the left side of the posy that you first worked in. And yarn over and complete the double crochet. And then go ahead and go to that next one. And you'll see that it's the next double crochet after that. Okay, and so there's the, the two. So you'll be doing 10. So this is the first two, and you'll do eight more for a total of 10 stitches in between every posy. So let's go ahead and do 10 stitches. And if you lose count, you can always just do a few and then go back and count to see where you are. Always know where you are. <laughs> okay, so I need to recount and see where I am. So that's my first right there. Let me take this out. So you can see, let's get the marker out of the way. This is the post I worked in. And this is where I worked into for that first double crochet. So I've got one, and let's see how it lines up with this one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I just need two more. Okay, and that makes 10. So in between every posy is 10 double crochets. Okay, and then we'll just unfold it and we can take the markers out. And there you have it. 
little posy. So very, very cute. I love this pattern. It's so cute. And this is gonna make just a really cute decorative pillow. And I'm just gonna do posies on just one side of the pillow. We'll do one more together without using markers. And then if you wanna use markers for every single posy of every single row, if that's gonna keep you from getting lost or if, if you're finding it hard to know where you are, please use the markers. So let's go ahead and do it together without markers. So you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna go diagonal to this one. Go under, underneath the post, yarn over, pull the loop, and complete a double crochet stitch. And then you're going to do the pico stitch. And you'll see, you just do it right on the left side of the strand of the chain. And pull through for a slip stitch. Okay. Go ahead and yarn over. And we'll do it four more times. And this yarn is really forgiving and nice because it's staying put so you can really see that you're right here. Whereas the soft, fuzzy, decorative yarn I'm going to make my pillow out of, it's very difficult to see where you are, and I could have really used the markers. I ended up not using markers, but at times it was like, where am I? So you just have to get used to it, and before you know it, you'll be doing it without even thinking. So now we have two, we'll do three more, so that's three and there's my Pico stitch. Okay, going back to count, I've got one, two, three, four, so I need one more, and that completes the left side of the posy. And one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, so if, if this is a lot for you, please just use a yarn that you can see easily and when you get really really good at it then switch to the soft angora hairy yarn <laughs> whatever kind of yarn you want to use that you really wanted to use but this is going to be so sweet and cute and this could make the greatest little baby pillow because this this is already starting to look like a really nice baby shower gift could make this for your next baby shower present. Okay, so turning it, you can see you've got a post, the right side of the posy post. Yarn over, insert underneath the post. Pull up a loop. And if you didn't make a pillow cover, you could make a baby blanket. We'll go down underneath. So you could crochet in the foundation beginning chain 
row that we do at the very beginning where I said do a multiple of 10, you could do 100 chains if that would be the width that you would want if you wanted to make this a little baby blanket. That would be very, very cute. Okay, so two more. Also, if you find that you've been crocheting for a long time and your right hand, if you're right-handed and this is all being done with your right hand, if you find that you're going numb or if it's starting to hurt, stop and do, you can look up videos. I've looked up exercises years ago for carpal tunnel syndrome and there are a lot of exercises that you can do to um, improve and work against the effects of carpal tunnel syndrome. And there are times where after crocheting for a long time, I do have to stop and do some of those exercises. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. And we wanna do that last double crochet with no pico. So we're going to go and do our last double crochet. Okay, and now we've rotated back to the upright position of the posy and just fold over that left leaf or the left set of petals. And you can clearly see this one. So you know that we're going to double crochet right there in the top of the left side of the posy post. At, you know, at the top of that double crochet. So go ahead and yarn over and slide underneath those two strands and make your double crochet. Okay, and then do nine more. There's nine and 10. The beginning pattern, and then fold this. Okay. So you keep doing this until you get to the end of the row and just make posy 10 double crochets Posy 10 double crochets all the way to the end and you'll end with a posy here and you'll have five double crochets at the end and that is including the chain three here. So one, two, three, four, five. So your last posy on this row, the left side of the posy is going to be right here and the right side of the posy is going to be on this one because you're going to go, you're going to chain back, you're going to double crochet back into the top of this one, which will be the left side of the posy. And it's going to be one, two, three, four, and you're going to go right into the top of this chain three. Okay. And so go ahead and work on that, and I will see you at the end of the row. Okay, so I completed my posy row, and this is what it looks like, and it's just so cute and dainty and very pretty. And so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep building rows and rows and create the desired height that we want for whatever pillow you chose. I'm doing an 18 by 18, and you could do an 18 by 12, whatever size pillow you want, or if you wanted to, you could just create your own pillow and do your own dimensions. 
and uh, get just a, an old pillowcase, put it in there and stuff it with polyfill if you want to. So you don't have to do this, of course, this is completely optional, but I want my posies to stay open. They are closing up like little clams. And as you can see, it's easy for them to stay that way. And so I'm just gonna sew mine open and it shouldn't take too long. And here is the yarn needle. And so it's always good to have one of these with the little blunt end, so it's not sharp at all. So just grab a piece of yarn, same yarn as you're working with, and go ahead and we'll just sew like a regular sewing project. So as we look at the posy, I think the best way that I have found to do this is when coming underneath, just going through, starting at the top right here, and it just can be anywhere, and just getting a nice little tail, pin it with your fingers so it doesn't end up pulling out. And then all I, was, all I have been doing is I'm just hopping all of the little double crochets. So I'm right here, so I'm just gonna hop this one and go in the space. And see how it just disappears and you can't even tell that it's there. And so I'm gonna go underneath the second one and come up in between the next. And then I'm just going to hop this one and go in between this one. And just pull it just a tight a little bit, coming back up through the middle of the next two and over the next double crochet. And just slightly tight and then come up in between the next two and back again. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go back, go back in and when I flip it over I've got the two little tails, and I'm just going to tie a regular knot. It's going to be on the inside of the pillow so it won't show. There. And that way, it's, and then I'm doing right underneath, right here, right underneath the pico stitch, so that the pico stitch still kind of comes up a little bit but the flower itself no longer closes. And that way you still have a little bit of a lift, but it's not closing up like a little clam. So I think that'll be, it is an extra step, but I think it'll be worth it if you don't wanna keep finding your posies closing up on you like that. Let's go ahead and we'll go back to my pillow and we'll sew it together. Okay. So that is my final row. We're gonna take it to the pillow and make sure. I'm going to do the last two rows. So when we're finishing, when we've decided how, how long we're gonna do it, it can really be any way we want, but to match the beginning rows of this whole square, we would finish it off with two more rows of double crochets and it just so happens I think that's the length I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two more rows of double crochets to give this a little bit of space away from the posy row, and we'll take it to the pillow and see how we've done. Okay, so I have completed my last two double crochet rows, and now I'm just going to fit this over the pillow and see if it matches up with size. So I'm just gonna align this, and I do want it just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit smaller, so that not too much, 
but that actually looks like it fits. Now, don't worry about <laughs> the shape of the posies right now. Okay, and then pulling it up this way. This is perfect. I am short just a little bit, so when stretched, so when I st stretch the pillow a little bit this way, it's gonna fit nice and tight, but not too tight on the pillow so that it won't sag. This is a really good stopping point. Well, I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight posy rows. Okay, so all I need to do is just fasten this off. So, and again, this was just two rows, not three, after the posy row. And so just yarn over, pull through, and cut it off. Okay. And then you can weave it in if you want to, or you can just let it be because it's going to be on the inside of the pillow sham. So it really doesn't matter. But if you want to just feed it in a little bit, you certainly can do that. And it will never show. So now I just have to go ahead and sew these open. And that should be the end of the decorative side. And then we will just do the back panel, which is just going to be solid double crochets all the way up in another 18 by 18 square. So starting just like we did in the very beginning of this panel, starting with the 62 chains, so multiple of 10, which we got to 60, and then we added the two chains, making 62, and then we double crocheted in the fourth chain from the hook and ended up having 60 stitches across. And we just build, 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 and just do nothing but double crochets all the way up. And it should be a lot quicker than stopping every 10 stitches to make a posy. And you can have your back panel made fairly quickly. Okay, so here is my plain square. And this was the right side, only because I, I know that because my tail is right here. and. It really doesn't matter with this particular piece because they both look the same, but just knowing that that was the right side, I'm turning it over this way. And so you will be having wrong sides facing together because we're going to just sew it as it is. So my double crochets are vertical here. And so you wanna make sure that it lines up with the decorative side of the pillow just like that, corner to corner. We're gonna leave this open for now because we're gonna sew all three sides and then we'll insert the pillow and then we'll sew it closed. So we're gonna line up our edges like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually turn it this way because I wanna start on the, on the side and go up to the top and around again. So, so we're gonna start with this corner. So find your corner, right there. And it's just gonna be very a very simple stitch. You're just gonna go through both loops. Now this is a side seam, so there aren't any loops necessarily for this one because it's, the, it's that raw edge of the double crochets. So just use your best judgment and you're just gonna basically, you're just gonna zigzag back and forth. Just small little stitches. Back and forth on the edge. Just like that. And just go all the way back and forth. 
all the way across until you get to the corner. This side is a little easier because you can line up the tops of the double crochets with each other. You can go ahead and insert. And then you can see they just line up and so you just can go back and forth, back and forth in the tops just underneath the loops. All the way across. So go ahead and do all three sides of your pillowcase and I will see you back at the beginning. And also if you have little tails like this which which are from the beginning and like from the tie off here just you can just tuck them right inside and just sew them inside. So you don't have to weave these in. You can just tuck it in and sew it closed. And that way you don't have to weave in any more ends. You can just leave it as it is. Okay, so now that I have the three sides sewn together, I am just going to slide my pillow in there. Great, so that looks like a good fit. I'm happy with that, and I'll just go ahead and close it up. Okay, so that is my posy pillow, and I think it looks very cute. It's very soft and cozy. It looks good on the bed as a decorative pillow, or you could make a couple of these and put them on your couch, and that would look really good too. And this particular yarn was so soft, so it just makes a really nice, pretty pillow. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope your pillow turned out as well. Please let me know how you did with your pillow. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.